This is a gameplay video of Boss Monster, the retro-inspired dungeon building game now available for pre-order at kickstarter.com. Before the game begins, each player randomly selects a boss monster. For this game, player 1 is playing King Croak, and player 2 is playing Gorgona. The boss with the highest XP value goes first, so that's King Croak. You start the game by drawing 5 room cards and 2 spell cards. Keep your 5 favorite cards, then discard the rest. This lets you start shaping your strategy from the very first turn. In Boss Monster, your goal is to build a dungeon that will lure, and destroy, adventurers. Before the first turn, each player can build one room for free. To build a room, play it face down, then all players simultaneously reveal what they've built. Player 1 built a Spectre's Sanctum, which has a build effect. In this case, the effect is that Player 2 has to discard a spell card. Player 2's room doesn't have a build effect, so the pregame ends and the first full turn begins. Every turn, two heroes come into town, and each player draws a card. Now comes the build phase. Again, rooms are played, and then simultaneously revealed. Every round of building is a chance to bid for heroes, because each type of hero is drawn to a specific treasure type. Fighters like magic weapons, clerics like holy relics, mages like spellbooks, and thieves like money bags. Whoever has the most of a certain treasure lures that hero card. Player 2 has more thief treasure than player 1, so the thief goes to her. In addition to a treasure value, rooms also have a damage value, shown in the empty heart at the room's bottom left hand corner. Cleric treasure is a tie, so the cleric will stay in town until the tie is broken. The thief takes 1 damage in the first room, and 1 damage in the second, but its health value is 4. It survives player 2's dungeon and remains face up as a wound. You lose if you end a turn with 5 or more wounds, but it's normal to get a wound or two before your dungeon is fully built out. No matter how many heroes are in town, more heroes arrive each turn. If a particular type of hero starts to build up, breaking the tie becomes crucial to winning. Player 1 and player 2 reveal rooms again, and player 2 plays a dark laboratory. Like many mage rooms, the Dark Laboratory lets player 2 draw spell cards. Spells have powerful effects, and there's no limit to how many you can play per turn. Icons on the spells indicate whether they're played during the build phase, or during the adventure phase. Unfortunately, mage rooms also tend to be low on damage, and this turn the mage survives player 2's dungeon, dealing another wound. As a new turn begins, two more heroes come into town and the players begin to build rooms. Player 1 adds to his dungeon, but player 2 upgrades her succubus spa with an advanced room, making it a vampire bordello. Advanced rooms are special rooms that can only be played on top of existing rooms, with which they share a treasure type. Player 1 still manages to lure the clerics, and by now his dungeon is strong enough to defeat them both. A defeated hero is flipped face down and becomes a soul. The first player to gain 10 souls is the winner. But player 2 has some tricks of her own. The thief in her dungeon looks like it's going to survive, but then she plays a giant sized spell to give her last room plus 3 damage. Now the room is strong enough to defeat the thief, and the room's special ability says that when a hero dies there, player 2 heals a wound. With one clever play, she's back to being tied with player 1. As a new turn begins, it looks like a fighter will be going to player 1 and the mage is going to player 2. Often, this sort of thing will change when new rooms are revealed, but this time the players keep their respective markets cornered. However, something else interesting happens with this build. Every boss card has a level up ability that triggers when your dungeon first reaches its maximum size of 5 rooms. These abilities are very powerful. King Croak's ability lets player 1 search the room deck and immediately add one advanced monster room to his dungeon. By now we've covered all of the basics, so let's jump forward to the last few turns of the game. At this point, all the ordinary heroes are gone and only epic heroes remain. Epic heroes are revealed when all the ordinary heroes have been used up. They have much more health and cause 2 wounds, but they're worth 2 souls. 
Player 1 has a lot of fighter runes, which tend to deal more damage, so he has no trouble killing the epic hero. But the epic thief looks like it's about to survive Player 2's dungeon, so Player 2 casts a teleport spell, sending the thief back to take her dungeon's full damage. The epic thief is defeated and Player 2 adds 2 souls to her total. The game is close, but Player 1 just barely manages to win the bidding war for Cleric Treasure in the last round. Two epic clerics go to him, bringing his total score to 12. And that's a game! So that's a look at Boss Monster, but there's no substitute for playing the real thing. Go to bewisegames.com today, or just search for us on Kickstarter. Pledge your support, and learn to master the dungeons.